Hello there, this is Tammy, and this is a video to give you a little preview of Quilted Photo Deluxe 3.0. I'm so excited about it. <clears throat> and so I'm going to give you a little walkthrough, show you what it does, and give you a little bit of information um, because I'm still adding new features. So this is the new interface. It's been brightened up and a rework so that it works with all the newer computers as well as the older ones so it works on Mac and PC iMacs and all of that and so we had it was you know, quite an endeavor and I'm glad you're here to check it out so let's start you know we have all the the usual features you know of course we always do pixels and we have all the different pixel shapes as always I'll never get rid of the contour technique so you can still do the contour features um, but what is absolutely new is this triangulation this is the crystallized photos so let me import a, a picture so I'm gonna start from here import image I'll use this one this one's nice and so and you can see it's a good picture, but let's try it in triangulation so you can see what that looks like. It's a dynamic, um, so it's a dynamic new way of doing things. So it responds to you, and you make the choices. How many pieces, big or small? So here's the toolbar, and um, I'm using the mesh and you'll see what that means in just a second let me move this to the side so every time I click 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 it adds more points so I'm giving it direction on how big or small these pieces are and I'm following the the edges of things I'm following the color value this takes into cons it takes into consideration all the things we've been learning over time so I'm paying attention to the highlights and the shadows and the shapes so now I'm clicking around her face and even the shadow um, from the hat because you remember light medium and dark always matters so I'm gonna pause as I continue this so that you know the video is not too long so I want to point out that I am outlining the most important things about her features so of course she needs eyebrows and I don't want to have too many pieces because then it becomes harder to complete with more work so I'm going to continue on. Another tip is to, if you put in um, too many, too many of the little points, you can use here on the on the toolbar. There's this eraser button. It allows you to activate the eraser and erase something and I'm turning it off so that I could go back and fill it in like I want it to so that's better and here's an example I'm going to do her mouth so I start at the corner and I work like a zigzag so I'm going to go up down up down up down, up, down, up, down, and I'm just doing the, the top of her lips and the bottom of her lips, and then I drag out to the corner. And so you could see, you can see a preview of what it looks like so far by looking at, by clicking on results. And you see you can't see the details of her lips yet so let me continue on I'm gonna go back to mesh because then I could see it so I want some smaller pieces 
kind of zigzag again on the inside of her mouth and this will give me her teeth don't do too many because then the pieces will be too small you want you're going to get an impression without having to have every small detail so super hard so again I went up down and now I'm going to drag it out to the side and let's take a look that's lovely I like it also you could take a look this way let me look let me see if you see some detail that's not showing up exactly like you want you could switch back and forth and I see one so let me point it out you see how her hair is jetting into her her cheek I clicked on mesh and I could see it's because I need to move the point out so I'm going to put a point where I want it and I'm going to erase this one that I don't want and let's take a look that's better let's check on this side how let's look at that one nope that one's fine she's looking beautiful the last thing you need to do is to also trace her clothes you see it's like funny here is because I didn't finish tracing her her blouse so I'm gonna follow along here this just took a few minutes to do but it's paying attention to the details so that you don't have to get the details you don't want and you keep the ones that are important all right so I'm gonna do more of her neck because here's shadows here too and this one right here this this section right here and I can use the mouse I have a roller on my mouse so I just rolled it down so I could see more of her picture and, an, and another thing you should notice it's not hard at all but if you start with a photo that doesn't have enough detail there's no way for you to get it get good details so one way you can tell if your fabric or if your photo has enough detail is that if it blows up and is big on your page like this if the picture is a little tiny little picture like you know not filling up the screen your picture is probably not big enough so let's take a look that is lovely beautiful one last thing I notice you see how her 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 red lipstick is going on her teeth I'm gonna switch over to mesh to see what it is and it's because there's no um, point right there so it's blending in so let me show you what you can do you can work on it in this stage too so I can put the mouse here and you can see where it looks best and that's what I'm gonna do I put a thing there and I see more of her teeth all right so now I want to talk about the new things that the programmer will be finished with next week and so I'm going to be sending out the new all the people all of you that have ordered or will order all of, I'll be sending out uh, the upgrade and the, the software next week because he's still finishing these new things so one in the in the class on Sunday someone requested um, the ability to save these patterns and being able to open it up in this stage again and uh, be able to work on it some more and we're adding that there's going to be a button called save points so and then you can open it by clicking load points um, that's going to be great and that's in the works as per your request I'm trying really hard to give you the best that I can the next thing that is coming and is brand new or that will be a, f a correction or a fix to make things a little easier is they're going to make the numbers slightly smaller you see sometimes they can get they can run on to the other pieces or get confusing because they're too close together so we're going to make the numbers a little smaller so that it's easier to tell 
what numbers go in what pattern. So that's in the works and coming next week. The next thing that's going to be added is, as you know, my, the patterns are always by color value. That's light, medium, and dark. One is always the lightest going up to the darkest. And in, in the, um, let me move this. In the tool palette, you can control how many numbers by clicking how many values you want to use. So if I want to use 15, when I print the pattern, when I save the pattern, those numbers will be 1 through 15 with 1 as the lightest up to the darkest. And um, that will be by color value or black and white. So there's going to be added a preview button so that you can, like right now, we're previewing in color and that's the default when you put push results. But there's going to be another button so that you can preview in the black and white. So, so I'm excited about that. And another thing I never talked about before is, or someone was re asking questions about how come the pattern in color, because you could see, you get a pattern, you could create this color image as well as the numbered pattern. How come it looks like they're different? It's because you're getting two patterns in one. If you want to determine how many, if you want to determine how many values, you click something, you put a number here. If you don't, if you want it to just choose it from the pattern, you keep it blank and the numbers will be filled in with like number 100 to 255 and it'll we're gonna I'm working on getting a color key so you could tell what each of the colors are so you have a way to follow these colors exactly if you should choose to do so so that's another exciting new thing that I'm going to be providing for you and the last thing I'm really excited about is adding in the ability to print these PDF files and make them bigger or smaller, whatever size you want, without leaving Quilted Photo Deluxe. So that's kind of a big one. We had planned just to use Adobe Acrobat, but I found out that they were now charging for the function we wanted to use. So we're going to add it to Quilted Photo Deluxe for your convenience. You don't have to learn another program. It's all going to be right here in Quilted Photo Deluxe. And I am super excited. And I'm going to show you what this pattern looks like. I mean, as you can see, I didn't put any number there. So I'm going to save it. And you can see that it has the, the numbers in there that are not by light to dark, one through whatever you put in here. So you can see what that looks like. So you know how that color key that, that we're going to give makes sense. And you can make it just black and white or leave it empty and use the color key. So here you can see this is the pattern without putting any number in that pattern number box. And that means it draws from the, the, the color key that we're going to be providing. And also you can see here we're going to make smaller numbers to make it easier to see, easier to use. I'm really ex excited about these changes. Um, and let's see the finish color pattern what that looks like and look how beautiful she is anyway I hope you will be um, if you're in the class on Sunday I'll be I'm excited to show you how to finish these quilts but otherwise if you um, upgrade or buy the software you can see the replay anyway thank you so much for joining me I'm Tammy Bowser how to sew art.com and I hope you will join us and join us using Quilted Photo Deluxe. I'll see you soon.